What's your story? Whether you're a client or an independent financial advisor, we know you face many important decisions that can affect your and your clients' long-term financial success. Welcome to the WIN Podcast, What's Important Now with Corey Hymanson, accredited investment fiduciary and president of Hymanson Wealth Advisors. In this podcast, Corey helps you identify your goals and objectives through financial education and comprehensive planning while inspiring you to make better behavioral decisions in your personal finance. With a twist on pop culture and current events, join us as we explore growth and protection strategies for individuals, advisors, and their businesses. Come and discover what's important to you now. Hello, and welcome to the Win Podcast with Corey Hymanson. Corey, what's going on? Hello there, Eric. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to be is that my Is you. that my go-to answer? Do I always say the same thing on every episode? Pretty much. Probably. And if people actually saw who, you know, saw me, they'd be like, why is he saying that? <laughs> <laughs> good to hear you. Good to hear you. Then. How about you that? Yeah. yeah, good to hear you too. Man. All right, my man, we are back for another podcast. Um, I'm kind of excited. This is this is a bit different. You sent me some brief notes. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but I've got a concept. So what what, what are you doing today? Well, let me throw you a question even before we get into this. When's the last time you ever did a book report? Oh, good Lord. It's kind of like a school um, thing, like a report on a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely back in school. Um, a good, solid book report? I would say that had to be junior high. And I know for certain people, <laughs> certain part of the country, that's middle school. But yeah, probably eighth grade, somewhere in there. I think it was uh, Mice and Men, if I'm not mistaken. It was a long <laughs> time ago, man. So that wasn't even like small paperback book. That was like real deal serious. That was, novel. yeah, that was, the, and I, I enjoyed the book. Um, I, I joke around every once in a while that I don't read. I don't read a lot, but I, I enjoy, I enjoy, I do enjoy reading, but I never really enjoyed book reports. And I, I didn't know anything about cliff notes, you know, back then I probably would have done sure. that because, you know, I was kind of lazy when it came to school, to be honest with you, just between me and you. Well, yeah, right. And, and the thousands of people around the world listening. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, <laughs> well, fun fact for me, I just finished a book report this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. So here we are. That's why we're here. Okay. I'm coming out of left field at everybody. And, and I thought we would do basically a book report. Okay. I feel like I, I need the to be excitement. in some sort of teacher outfit, <laughs> outfit with a yardstick or something, right? Yeah, I can hear the excitement through the airwaves. But yeah. the nice part of this is one of our taglines at our office is we make life easier. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the goal for clients. But so today, this is going to be easy sailing for the listeners because I did all the heavy lifting and, and you're along for the ride. All right. I like that. Let's do this. So, so basically, the fancy title to this episode is Book Club Part One. <laughs> I, <laughs> Real crazy. I have never been part of a book club. And if I did, I would want it to be a cook book club. Is that okay? Because <laughs> honestly, I'd, there you go. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, fun. So, so this is actually a book I've read before. I just freshened up on it the last week or so, just so I, I could be reasonably current and, and mm -hmm. educated on this podcast. But it, the book is called The One Page Financial Plan. And it, hmm. it's written by this gentleman named Carl Richards. And so, Carl is. He's actually a certified financial planner, um, but actually his, his claim to fame is he is known as the sketch guy, not sketchy, sketch guy for the New York Times. Oh. So for the last, boy, I think it's like 13 years, he has a weekly column in the New York Times, and, and he generally talks about a, a very simplistic sketch. You know, and, I, and I'm talking like a circle with a dot in it, and he, he ties it to finance, essentially. But it's maybe way more interesting to me than the average Joe or Jane on the street, but he's really good at taking a complicated concept and almost drawing a sketch like on a whiteboard or a piece of paper and, and clients or advisors will look at it and go, Oh yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. So my takeaway though, is that, and I've said this before, so all the, all the TV commercials and magazine ads for certified financial planners, being the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know, they're going to hate me, but simple is better sometimes, you know, and, and I, I don't think everybody out there listening needs a thousand page written certified financial plan that maps out the rest of their existence. Now, that being said, planning is important. 
but you know, we, if we go with the theme of the podcast here, when what's important now, mm -hmm. let's solve today's stuff, but build it into the long range project. And, and so this book is what it is. He talks about how basically anybody can create a one page financial plan. And so that's our goal. By the end of this episode, we're going to, we're kind of do a, a, an exercise for the listeners that basically anybody can knock this out and we're going to get it done today. Okay. I mean, as you were talking, I looked at, looked up these sketches. I like it because it looks like it's on a napkin. Yeah. And that's his joke is that, you know, maybe throughout history, there's been mergers of large companies that probably happened in a, in a lounge somewhere mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, scribbling absolutely. on a napkin. And, and that's his point is that basically if you have the real premise designed in a, in a small sketch or a, or a one piece page of paper, that's where you build from. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying this stuff is so easy that you, you don't need a long range plan. You need a plan, but mm -hmm. let's get the high level stuff dialed in and then we'll fix all the detailed stuff behind the scenes, you know, from there. All right. That makes sense. So I've got, instead of doing an audio book and reading this to everybody for 150 pages, I've got 11 <laughs> fast little takeaways. And then after we go through those 11, which will be kind of rapid fire, then we're going to dive in and we're going to basically talk it out loud on, on, on creating a one page financial plan, whether it's on a bar napkin or a piece of paper or a yellow pad, whatever you got out there, we're going to get this done and knock it out today. All right, let's do this. Here's kind of the, and this is kind of a tricky one. This makes people think, but you know, the first thing I want to say is from the book, a person needs to think about and basically identify why is money important to you? Mm. And that's kind of a deep one. I, I, I get it. You know, as I sit with people, most of the time people have probably never been asked this question. And so they, they just think I have to have X amount of dollars if that's a million or 2 million or whatever the number is. But to really come up with a plan and, and to feel good about your existence and your stamp that you leave on this earth, I do think, I think the author's right. I think you, you have to have an understanding or a definition essentially of why is the money important or why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And so if I threw that question at you, and if you need some time to think about it, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my answer, <laughs> but you know, let's, let's just kind of spitball or brainstorm a yeah. couple of them. If it was me, what comes to mind for me is why is the money important? It, the money is important because I want more time to do the things I want to do. Maybe not today, but I, I mean, mm -hmm. in the future, that's sort of what retirement means to me is, you know, having saved or having the resources that maybe I have more time to read a book in the future or take that trip or go to the grandchildren's ball game or ballet recital. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. So I'll throw it back at you and see if you have an, <laughs> I didn't give you much time to think about that. I don't No, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a great question. And, and I have answered this question many times. I've helped other people answer this question many times uh, when it came to coaching and consulting and, you know, my history. Um, and that was always kind of the root of, why they're doing what they're doing or what their, their overall goal is for growing their business or growing their practice or whatever it was that we were working on. It was always growth. Obviously. I mean, people know that they hire a coach for growth. Um, but there's always an underlying reason. And for me, my answer is, is very similar to yours. Probably identical pretty much is freedom. I want the freedom to decide what I do when I do and who I can help and how I can help. Right. That, that's the freedom that I'm looking for. You, you said grandkids, you know, I've got grandkids. I, I love the fact that I have the ability to go to a game and, you know, my, my grandson's out there playing. My granddaughter is, is running around playing with friends and comes over and her and I can walk to the concession stand and grab some snacks for her and her friends and a couple of drinks or whatever and go back. And, and I've got the time to spend with them, but I've also got a little bit of financial freedom to be able to treat them here and there. And, um, you know, even beyond that, create experiences for my family as much as I can. Maybe it's vacations, things like that, and uh, more in the future as well. But I think it's about freedom for me. Good answer. Good answer. And as you were giving that answer, 
what came to my mind is, and I see this a lot, people retire, maybe they take a little honeymoon phase essentially, and then they decide maybe they, they want to go back to work to, in, in some fashion, maybe not for the money, but for something to do. Mm -hmm. and, and to a T, when that happens, if it's not about money, every one of them says the same thing to me. I want to do what I want to do, or if I'm going to drive a truck for somebody at harvest time, I'm going to do it on the days I want to do it. I want to have the freedom to choose, yeah. you know, <laughs> yep. what I'm doing that day. And, and so that's a perfect answer. And, and it's right. People need to be productive, you know, and product productivity essentially comes from freedom. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. it's, I agree. In some way. Okay. So, so that's kind of, that's kind of the philosophical part of what we're getting through in this whole project today. But the next one is a good one. And I like to remind this to anybody or my kids focus on what you can control mm. and reach <laughs> this doesn't have to be finance, you know, hallelujah. I mean, it, it can be so many things we, and it, people I know, people I don't know, they're, they're all out there. There's a lot of anxiety. There's people that worry mm -hmm. about stuff and man, if you can just wrap your mind around the idea that, boy, if I can't control uh, mother nature, let's say, then I probably don't need to lose a lot of sleep about it. I just deal with whatever comes. You know? Yeah. And, and that goes to finances too, or working with coworkers or, or any of those things. Yeah. Okay. Next one. A lot of people I've, I've worked with tend to overestimate the amount of cash flow they're going to need in retirement. And now I know this sounds funny because everybody out there thinks, geez, Corey is always telling me to save more, save more, save more. But I think a lot of people, and this ties back to the old, Hey, are you a spender or are you a saver? <laughs> you know, the people that accumulate and save are probably the ones I'm talking about here that overestimate what they think they're going to need. And because maybe you get to retirement, boy, that first, I, I called it honeymoon phase earlier, that first few years or five years, you might be going as, at full throttle of traveling and doing fun stuff and going out to eat. And, and then there might come a day where you're like, boy, that's kind of getting to be old hat. And, and, and you change your ways. And, yeah. and so I don't want people to get cut short. I'm not trying to say that, but I'm just saying be realistic maybe. Uh, in what we are trying to, to put together or accomplish. Yeah. And again, I, I think it's, goes back to, and I'm, I, this sounds self-serving for the podcast, but really it's working with somebody who can tell you that because people are always going to have the fear, right? I'm not going to have enough, right? I need more. Um, and you've, you've said before on this podcast, there's, there's conversations that you have to have is look, slow down and spend some of your money, <laughs> have some fun, go do something and enjoy this while you have that time. I mean, if I'm going to wait till I'm 70 to take a vacation and, and enjoy myself because I want to make sure I have enough money, I'm not going to be able to do the vacations that I want to do now when I'm, I'm almost 50 now, but you know, at 50 or 55 or 60, there's, there's going to be body issues. Let's be honest. Right. If, if, if climbing Mount Everest is on your bucket list, you probably don't want to wait till 70 to try and uh, get in shape and take on <laughs> yeah. that one. Yeah. Very true. And so that, yeah, that goes to the next one, you know, and I know a lot of people that sit in my chair talk preaching about goals and goals and yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I try not to really hammer that home, but from the book, there, there is a takeaway that, that basically people need to set three types of goals, short-term goals, which are very obtainable, something very near term, near term. You can define it. You can reach it easily. Next one is a stretch goal which I would maybe call something challenging or ambitious, you know? So that's, that's a little tougher, but still good. I think to have it out there to, to go for that character, you know, to chase it. And, mm -hmm. and then you always have long range goals. And, and I hate to use this word, but long range goals in life are really like guesses. Yeah. I'd agree. Because you, you got so much runway ahead of you, most likely that in so many variables and factors that, you know, a lot of this is really guessing. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but you know what I mean? Well, I mean, again, you can have the desires. It's, it's great to be able to have those long-term goals, break them down uh, into manageable pieces, so on and so forth, and manageable timelines. But bottom line is that things change in our lives. I mean, people who had who set goals in 2018 for the next 10 years had no idea the pandemic was coming. Um, and, and then there's a ton of people that set goals in 2018 for 10-year goals and had no idea that they were going to have a grandchild. Uh, you know, and, and that, that soon or whatever, right? Something comes along positive or negative and it changes everything. So 10 year goals are great. 
to begin to work toward, but yeah, they've got to be flexible, man, because there's just no way it's going to be exactly the picture. Most likely it's not going to be. Well, it, there you go. You're spot on. You actually just hit one of my bullet points that was further down my list. So I'm going to jump to that one. All and, right. And, and you are right. Life comes with disappointments. Mm. Now that's, that's the punch you between the eyes type part of this <laughs> sentence. But what the main goal or main comment I had here was things change. And there's no mm -hmm. such thing as perfect and, and yeah. perfection uh, just isn't out there. So you're going to get disappointments. You're going to have health issues. You're going to have divorces. You're going to have, you know, who knows what, but you, you tackle them head on and you, and you move forward. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that's all, not all disappointments because grandbabies are awesome, but they cost money too. <laughs> not as much right. as your kids do. Yeah. Well, um, no, you're right. So yeah, when we talk change, I shouldn't just be banging the drum that everything's disappointing and doom and gloom. <laughs> change can be exciting. Change can be fun, cool, new phases of life. Absolutely. Yeah. So the only, the only real change is that change happens. Yeah, exactly. Next one though, is do not obsess over your goals. So, so we talk about maybe setting three of those different types of goals. People that obsess with these things and look at them daily, or they look at their account values online daily or multiple times a day, it gets too emotional. You cannot, yeah. you cannot succeed in that environment. And, and this is, you know, people with say a mindset of an engineer, you know, that in their world, they can solve everything through formulas and black and white, you know, thought processes, mm -hmm. markets and life are not like that. You know, so oh, it, yeah. it takes a different mindset or you have somebody in your corner that can kind of coach you through this stuff. Yep. Agreed. Uh, next one. Yeah. And this kind of ties to spending and I know everybody hates to even hear that word, but I'm not saying everybody needs a budget, but some people probably do. Budgeting really equals awareness or being mm -hmm. aware of money flowing in and money flowing out. And, and, and so maybe that's the word I should use with people instead of saying you should do a budget. I should say, Hey, let's, let's put some effort into being aware of how you spend and what you're spending on every month. Yeah. I I, it it goes right better. back with goals, right? But there's an old saying, what gets measured gets done. And, and that's the exact same thing with, with a budget, even though it's the B word and people don't like the B word, but that's, you're just measuring it. That's all you're doing. Right. And, and I know inspirational speakers always say, boy, if you want to buy a boat, you got to have a picture of boat on your desk or <laughs> on the dash of your car, somewhere where you can see it every day. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe look at it once a week instead of daily. I don't know. Yeah. It might, get, it might get depressing if you feel like you're not making any progress toward that, but yeah, who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and this next one, it, it ties into the whole budgeting and spending thing. Save as much as you can, you know, by all means, if you end up with extra, there's, there's outlets for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can donate, you can spend more, you can <laughs> set up a foundation, you know, whatever, but it's better to have too many things than not enough resources. Yeah. Yes. It's my takeaway there. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, next one, you know, and we're hitting all these things. People know all these words, but, uh, insurance, I know some people feel like they're insurance poor, whether it's all the premiums they pay on life insurance or car insurance, home insurance, pet insurance, dental, and we can go all day long, but I like to say buy just enough insurance to basically cover today's worst case economic scenario. Mm. Now that sounds a little complicated. I mean, what does that mean? You know, just think through of what's the worst case scenario if, if my house burns down, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do I need a specific dollar amount of money or do I need replacement? Well, you probably need replacement, but uh, that, that really goes with life insurance. That really goes with disability insurance because you get to a certain age, you know, maybe you don't need disability coverage because you're, you're close to age 65 or over it. Uh, or you have the resources that if you didn't work from age 62 to 65, you could still pay your bills. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. All right. This next one, I really like this invest like a scientist. Huh. That's <laughs> And so instantly, you know, you think of like, I don't know, TV shows like Big Bang Theory or something like, I don't know mm -hmm. if I want to rely on those guys. But uh, point being, if you're going to do this stuff yourself, by all means, you better be doing your homework, doing your research. Uh, yeah. There are so many times I'll have a client, you know, where we're managing all the money and they'll say, oh, I, I want to buy this XYZ stock. And if I start asking some questions around 
price to earnings ratios, market cap. You know, I start using terminology. I can I can tell in a hurry if they know what I'm talking about or not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and my point is, and a lot of times they'll they'll understand where I'm going with this is if I ask enough questions about those things, they'll they'll admit that they have done no homework, no research. This is like something that popped up. Uh, in an ad on their phone or Facebook or coworkers mm -hmm. or others, relatives, paper boy's wife owns it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. extreme, but point being, do you think a doctor prescribes certain medications if they haven't read any of the research or, or findings? I on sure hope not. You know, <laughs> yeah. I would hope they're not pushing things just because they enjoy the, the pharmaceutical rep that comes around or buy some golf balls or whatever. Yeah. Right. That'd be great. So if you're keeping track at home, I, I've now offended the medical profession, maybe engineering. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Uh, and here's a good one. And, and you kind of alluded to this already earlier, probably didn't even know I was going to say it, but the job of a financial professional, or at least the primary job is actually to stand between clients and that one big financial mistake that could happen at any point in their future and derail everything. Mm, I like the way you said that. And, and, and you know, you could, you could probably even visualize this in a sketch from the sketch guy. You know what I mean? If there's like <laughs> the advisor standing in the middle and there's you or the client name on the left and, and on the right is a really huge, scary looking mistake, whatever that mm. would look like. A cliff. I'm not just growing off. There cliff. you go. Yeah. Be because <sighs> You know, there, there are certain clients or prospective clients that might say to an advisor, oh, geez, I don't, I don't think I want to pay that much. I don't want to pay that kind of a fee for your management. Well, you know what? You only have to have one screw up in life that will far exceed anything you would have ever paid for management expenses mm -hmm. over, a, over a lifetime. Yeah. You know, so there you yeah, go. That's a good point. So here we go. How are we doing on time? I think we're okay, aren't we, for the, yeah, we're great. For the big finale? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wish I had a drum roll. There you go. We got yeah. nothing. So here it is. We're going to try and, without, without video, we're going to try and basically encourage people right now to create a one-page financial plan. Okay. Three steps is all we're talking. So this can be a, 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 a sticky note. This can be... Like you said, I don't even know if you said it or if I came up with the cocktail napkin. <laughs> I just know kind of, stuff was on that. It looks like it's on napkin. So I like that. A, a napkin of any size. That's color right. Mm. Or purpose. Um, okay. So number one, step number one, and this is, boy, this is where we started this. This is the toughie. Write down why money is important to you. And I'm not saying this needs to be a paragraph. Maybe it's just, you know, kind of, we alluded to freedom or time or, you know, maybe it's family. I, maybe it's a specific purpose, you know? So that's a tough one. And if you're out there listening and you're thinking, eh, maybe I'll circle back to this later, by all means, if you want to talk to us about it, we can, we can walk you through yeah. ways to maybe wrap your mind around these things too. Now, the second one, this is where we, where we hit those goals earlier. So I'm going to say, write down your, your best guess or guesses at those three types of goals we talked about, like a short-term goal, a stretch goal, and a long-term goal. So in my world, a short-term goal might be, we want to take a vacation 12 months from today, and I, I don't want to take it out of my emergency fund at the bank. So, you know, can we, can we set aside X amount of dollars a month and, and have that ready for Europe or Nashville or whatever the dream ticket is? And, and maybe that stretch goal is more like, boy, little Johnny and his sister are going to be going to college in, in six or seven years. And we haven't started saving yet. That makes it a little more challenging. So I'm going to call mm -hmm. that a stretch because it's a little longer timeline, but it's, it's obtainable, but it's going to be difficult. So let's come up with yeah. a plan. Let's start with a goal essentially of what we got to get to or try to get to whether that, that son or daughter is going to state school or uh, private school or online Academy, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and design a plan. And then the third one would be the long-term stuff. And instead of how much money do I need, I, I really like to phrase that back to how much cash flow do I think I might need when I retire? 
And then mentally, I'm going to remind you that I, I told you listeners that a lot of people overestimate that. So if you think you need $6,000 a month in retirement, but you don't have any debt, that might be plenty depending mm-hmm. where you live, depending where you live. I, I, I'm yeah. going to cover, cover that or caveat that thing, because if you live in Manhattan, uh, New York, it's going to be different than Manhattan, Kansas, different than, than the city I live in. Yep, for sure. And, and so the people might be catching through on this. Yes, we're creating a very, very short, high-level one-page plan. And then underneath of that becomes a lot of behind-the-scenes work from people like me or, or teams like me, advisors out there who can take all the heavy lifting off of the plate to solve what we've done here. Yeah. And now the third one, the, the big finale. This is step three. And, and honestly, this is the easiest of the three. I would ask somebody to write down the types of debts they have, whether it's dollar amounts. Well, it should be both. It should be dollar amounts and the type. So if you have a car loan or two car loans, if you have a mortgage loan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, college student debt, whatever. Whatever you have, let's know what we're up against and let's know what that dollar total is. Yeah, that's great. So now the napkin, the post-it note, you know, something should have some words on it for these people. From here, a strong financial professional can help any person they're sitting in front of solve all of this. Yeah. Yeah. I I love this because it's, again, it's a great start. Um, And there's so many, so many things out there, so many resources that can help people figure this stuff out, especially the, you know, the types of debts they have, dollar amounts. Um, I would even encourage the, with the type of debt that you have, um, Corey, wouldn't you think that would be a, probably a good idea to, to figure out or make sure you know what the percentage rate is because things change, um, especially credit cards. Those that have credit cards, sure, you get a notice in the mail, but really who reads all, all the credit card crap that comes in the mail? Um, and all, it can be a notice that's saying, hey, we're increasing the percentage rate. And they give you a notice and then all of a sudden a month or 60 days later, whatever the rule is, your percentage rate goes up and you didn't even know it. And you're still paying the same amount, which is paying down that debt a lot, you know, slower, so on and so forth. Um, but uh, I think that that might be a good idea too. No, that that's exactly right. And, and the one I see a lot of is business owners who have credit lines, you know, kind of an operating loan that they borrow from, they pay down and they view it as something they're always going to have. It's like, as long as I'm working or running my, my farm or my private business, I'm going to have debt and it's just going to ebb and flow on the balance. But we're, you know, we're recording this podcast in 2023 and what have interest rates done? Uh, they've ratcheted up a lot you oh, know, yeah. from the start of the year to where we're at on, on the recording today. And so credit lines that used to be, let's just throw out a number of 4%, are now running at eight. Yeah. And so that's, that's serious coin. If, if you got a million dollar credit line, Ooh, you know, you might realize that, yeah, I just pay up and down whenever I can. And I, once a year I have to try and clean up the interest. Well, you might be in for a shock on renewal day, you know? Yeah, seriously. And that kind of ties into, you know, what we're talking about there is kind of shorter term, you know, mm-hmm. day by day debt and things like that. But the success in this entire project is really going to be determined over decades and not days. Yeah. Yep. And it, well, and it that's, makes me, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, that's one of the things that we've talked about many times. You've talked about many times is that what you do specifically is a relationship. It's, it's not a transactional business. It is, we're, we're in this together for a long time uh, because it is not a one and done deal. Um, and that's what I like about working with you, honestly, is, is on this podcast is just getting to know you more and more and how you work with your clients and the relationships that you've built. Um, I think you've even had some special guests on the show um, that, that know exactly how that relationship works. Uh, and it, it's been fantastic. And so I think everyone that's listening to this needs to have that relationship with a professional because it's great to be able to write all this stuff down on a napkin, but at some point you're going to have to have somebody help you create an actual file with this stuff in a, a game plan. Absolutely. And, and the phrase that comes to mind that in my mind is, is setting my firm and my philosophy and me apart from a lot of other people in this industry. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the, the only option out there. There are definitely good advisors out there, but 
I think it was John Lennon's quote was life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and so for a lot of people, all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, man, I'm on the back end of this, this, this life thing or this circle, you know, and you need a friend in your corner. You need, you need somebody in your corner looking out for you. That's going to not just tell you all the rosy stuff. They're going to be the voice of reason and the voice of reality. Yeah. Yep. Because you got to have a focus on reality and some of these things, even if it's disappointing or scary or so damn awesome, it's beyond awesome, mm -hmm. but you want to hear it. And if you yeah. hear it, then you can solve it. That's right. And speaking of a fantastic person to have in their corner, Corey, that's you. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Why don't you give them some contact info so they can reach out to you? Absolutely. You know, and, and I know you always hit this too, Eric, but boy, if you're, if you're listening out there and you like the podcast, certainly let us know. You know, yeah. and leave a review and like it and share it. Tell all your friends. But give us a call anytime. 800-657-4316. And if you're listening to this podcast and you, you think, hey, I'd like to learn about this, A, B, or C, still call. Still email. It, Corey is very open to that. We've talked about that before. Um, we, we probably should do a top 10 questions show one of these days. And so if you've got questions, email him in. He'll answer right away, but we can also include that in the podcast in the future. It's a great idea. I like it. All right. Let's do it. All right, Corey, this has been fantastic. Thank you. I, I, I'd never heard of the book. And so thank you for doing the book report for us, covering all that and uh, summarizing it. Um, I thought it was a great discussion and, and a lot of great points. So thank you again so much for doing that. And of course, our last thank you always goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to The Win Podcast with Corey Hymanson. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This is when Corey comes out with a new podcast. It'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask you to share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review. This actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hymanson Wealth Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to The Win Podcast. What's important now? The show that helps you achieve your financial dreams. To ask questions about topics covered during the show or get a copy of Stop Doing Dumb Things With Your Money by Corey Hymanson, visit www.hymansonwealth.com or give us a call at 712-472-3867. Don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes become available. Securities offered through Securities America, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Securities America Advisors, Inc. Hymanson Wealth Advisors and Securities America are separate entities.